God wants you to have a better life. I believe as we choose, we can have a better life. The better life that God wants you to have is paid with miracles. This is the place for miracles. Not only the place for miracles, but I want to let you know without any doubt today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean? That means what he did in Bible days, he's still doing these days. Now, if you've not been watching us the past few weeks, you probably are wondering, well, what's that big cross behind Richard? Well, my wife, Lindsay, who'll be along later in the program, uh, had a, an, another prophetic dream. And in that dream, Jesus told her to take the prayer requests and to pin them or put them on the cross. And so we had our, our staff to build a, an eight foot cross and people have been sending in their prayer requests and we've been putting or pinning them on this cross and releasing our faith, laying our hands on these requests, praying God for miracles. Now, I hear more that have been coming in today. Uh, Carol says, please pray for my children and for my lightheadedness. Put it on the cross. We're putting this on the cross for you, Carol. Pamela says, please pray for my daughter suffering with epilepsy. And she mentioned several other things. Pin it to the cross. We're going to put it on the cross uh, for you, Pamela, and believe God. Susan sees, says, please pray for my mother that she has a complete healing and put it on the cross. LaShonda wants us to put this prayer request on the cross for her oldest daughter. Now, it may be a child, it may be a brother, a sister, uh, 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 someone in your family, a distant relative, cousin, aunt, uncle. Send me your prayer request so I can put it on the cross. Send it to oralroberts.com slash the cross. Uh, Maureen, uh, please pray for my stomach problems and to pay off my mortgage. <laughs> we'll put this on the cross. Maureen, in Jesus' name, and believe God with you. Rosa, uh, for financial help for my son, put it on the cross. Su Susanna, put the breakthrough for my daughter and for my mother to recovery from head trauma. And Bernie, uh, my health needs, healing from cataracts and other things that Bernie mentions, put it on the cross. Uh, Eddie, especially pray for my family and for my head. Put it on the cross. And we're putting all these on the cross. These are just coming in. So whatever you, whatever it is that you need, let me know. Um, I got some testimonies that came in also, uh, very powerful testimonies. Uh, Lisa says that she called for prayer. Her mother had been hospitalized and bound, or bed bound, she called it, in, in bed. But after you prayed, Richard, and after your prayer group prayed, Lisa called back to say, my mother is not in bed anymore. She's up in the kitchen fixing breakfast, and I am praising God. Hallelujah. Uh, she's in Mableton, Georgia, by the way. Uh, and uh, Billy out in Las Vegas, thank you for your prayer partners. When I called for prayer, they prayed for me. My PSA blood level went from 1.9 down to 0.07 which is almost to zero today. We're getting there, <laughs> Billy says. We're getting there, I like that. Thank God, thank you for your prayers. It's a joy, Billy, to pray and to believe God. And this is Dwayne out in Grand Junction, Colorado. I listened to your podcast recently where you had Robin Bullock on as your guest. And a few weeks ago, I preached for Robin uh, at his church. Um, at the end of the podcast, you and Robin both prayed. And when you prayed, you gave words of knowledge about deliverance for those with a low self-image and shame. That was me. I have prayed and been prayed for many times with minimal results. But when you prayed, my heart was freed from years of a failure, shame, and defeat. Thank you so much by being led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, give praise to the Lord. Dwayne, what a wonderful, wonderful testimony. You know, if you haven't seen any of my weekly podcasts, uh, wherever you download podcasts, you can get it. I call it Expect a Miracle with Richard Roberts, and I have guests every week. Uh, Robin was one of our, he's a powerful prophetic uh, minister. Uh, I uh, had him on recently, and, and uh, lots of people watching it. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 I staple these together because I wanted, I wanted to read them especially to you. Uh, this is uh, Cheryl Lee in Florence, South Carolina 
called the prayer group for prayer, needed a job with good pay. And now she's calling back, Richard, after you prayed, uh, I got a good job at a restaurant and have already quickly been advancing and promoted to a higher position. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is because uh, Jenny uh, in, in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, uh, wants me to put this on the cross concerning uh, her son's employment and Beatrice concerning a family member getting a job. And Beverly says, uh, for our son, David, uh, and this is all employment, uh, employment related. And I'm putting all these on the cross. And Shirley, thank you for your testimony. Then I, I pinned this together this morning, this little, little paper clip there. Eddie out in uh, Dangerfield, Texas, said his mother had heart problems when she was 25 years old. She went to an Oral Roberts tent meeting in Corpus Christi and your, your dad laid hands on her and prayed. Now, her mother was 25 at the time. I want you to know my mother was healed and lived to be 91 years old. <laughs> and there was nothing wrong with her when she died. She just died of old age. But she's praising God and, and lots of, uh, of prayer requests concerning uh, mothers and family members, and, and I'm, I'm going to put them on the cross coming from, from uh, St. Bernard, Louisiana, and from Oakmont, Pennsylvania, that's in the Pittsburgh area, from Parma, Idaho, out in Indiana, uh, from Chibolo, Texas, and I'll be putting these on the cross. Speaking of healings that have lasted the test of time, I want to share a wonderful testimony. Uh, Brother Tommy Combs lives in Dora, Alabama. Tommy has been a friend for many years. He owns and operates a television station there, which our program is seen on. Tommy is a powerful evangelist, not only in the United States, but all over the world. And recently, Tommy was a guest on my podcast, and he shared the most incredible healing testimony of what happened to him when he was 10 years old, and he's still healed today. Just watch this. At age 10, I contacted a terrible disease that we today call uh, hepatitis, but in my day, it was yellow jaundice. And yellow jaundice infected my liver. Now, my daddy was a coal miner in Walker County, Alabama, and so we went to a company doctor, meaning that all the coal miners visit the company doctor, and the company paid the bill, so it was the company doctor. And he gave me a penicillin shot. You know, penicillin must have been good for everything. <laughs> but we got a penicillin shot and went home. Two weeks later, I go back to him, and guess what? Another penicillin shot and back home again. Well, I'm very, very sick, very sick. I go to the third time. Now, I've been sick a month. I go to the third time, and he examines me and says, oh, this boy is bad. My skin was yellow. My eyeball, you know, the fluid in my eyes was yellow. I was yellow. And he said, he needs to go to the hospital in Birmingham. Well, we didn't own a car. We had to borrow my uncle's car, which means we had to get out of the coal mines at 4.30 in the afternoon. So I got to Birmingham Hospital at about 7 p.m. Thursday night. They examined me. The doctors examined me. They come to the, my mom and dad and said, uh, he should have been here a month ago. His liver is destroyed, and uh, your son will die three to five days. That's all we can do. We're going to give him IVs. We're going to try to take care of the best we can, but uh, he, he needs a liver replacement. His, his liver is gone. Oral Roberts came on television in Birmingham, Alabama, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And you know the story. Touched the television, touched my hand. His hand was on the screen. Let this be a point of contact. God's able to heal you. Let's let our faith go as we pray. Well, my mother and my grandmother are praying for me. They're in the hospital room praying for me. And my mother does exactly what Oral Roberts says. She puts her hand on my stomach. She puts her other hand on the TV screen. I ask thee, O Lord, to heal. To heal the sickness and disease. And this is what my mother said. 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah, my mother prayed that prayer, God heal my boy and I will give him to you. That's the words my mother said. She touched or Robert's hand on the TV screen, if you will, touched my stomach, 
prayed that prayer and instantly, I'm not talking about in a minute, after a while, next week, three days later, instantly the power of God hit that hospital room. A blue mist rolled into the room, knocked my mama out on the left side of the bed, on the floor, knocked my grandmother out on the right side of the bed, on the floor. And Jesus walked right up to my bed. I mean, he's standing eight foot away at the base of my bed. Now, you remember the movie, uh, Heaven is Real, where the young boy was, uh, was went to heaven and came back home and, and so forth. And at the end of that movie, they had a painting of Jesus that a young lady had done. That painting that showed on that movie is basically the description I can give you of Jesus. It was absolutely wonderful. I was totally healed. Doctors came in that day, within an hour, Three doctors came in, examined me, looked me over, gave me the blood test, did all you had to do, and told my mom and dad, he has no jaundice. He is totally healed by the power of God. Yeah, that's just amazing. Of course, in those days, they called it uh, yellow jaundice, I guess. Uh, Tommy's maybe a year or two younger than me, but now, of course, we know it as hepatitis. But uh, to, to hear that testimony, and when he shared it, tears came into my eyes. Uh, if you've never seen my podcast, wherever you download podcasts, just look for uh, Expect a Miracle with Richard Roberts. It's a weekly podcast. It's seen across the Charisma Network, our network, and our ministry as well, wherever you download your, your podcasts. Um, Tommy's been a friend a long time. God bless you, Tommy, and your dear wife and your family there in Dora, Alabama. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, you know, there's a little bandwidth problem, so that's why the, the mouth and the sound wasn't upright. Sometimes, you know, when you have a phone situation, that's how it, how it happens. But anyway, it's worth, worth your seeing. Uh, talking about ongoing miracles, this is Grace in Pembroke Pines, Florida. This has been going on since 2013. I want to give praise to the Lord for my son. He's 25 years old today, but in, night, but in 2013, he was in a motorcycle accident which caused brain injury and broke his neck. He's not supposed to live, he's supposed to die within the week. But you all prayed and the prayer of faith has been answered. Um, he's now able to walk with help. He's able to eat. He's received so many miracles. I heard the surgeon say it was a miracle. If anything, he should have been bedridden, but he's not bedridden, he's able to go to college. And I wanted to thank the Lord for what he's done. And uh, I want you to agree with me for the completion of his restoration. Well, it's a healing in process. Sometimes healings come immediately. Sometimes they come over a period of time. And this, this is a testimony, but I'm gonna pin it to the cross as a testimony and a prayer request. And if you've not sent your prayer request in yet, do it now. Oralroberts.com slash the cross. Here is Jordan to sing. Righteous Savior died for freedom's sake gave his life in place of mine Worthy Jesus gave it all for love poured his blood for my shame
talk to you about what's behind me because what's behind me is what's in front of you in a sense. When we realized that more than 2,000 years ago Jesus went to the cross and at the cross he created an atmosphere so we could have life and life everlasting as well as life more abundantly here on this earth. I sit back and think why in the world don't I realize what Jesus did and then live in it, walk in it. One day, oh, it, it had to be years ago, I really heard this, this impression it's so strong in my heart, don't let one drop of the shed blood of Jesus be wasted. Wow, that made an impression on me more than perhaps hardly anything I've ever heard in my life. Don't let one drop of the shed blood of Jesus be wasted. If Jesus went to the cross for our healing, our wholeness, our salvation, for all authority that he has given to us on earth, why would we sit back and say, well, the devil is just making a mess out of my life? Well, the devil may be making a mess out of your life because his job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We can turn to the cross, believe the cross, put our expectations into what Jesus did on the cross and not allow one drop of the shed blood of Jesus to be wasted. As you see the cross behind me, what is that? That is because Yes, I had another prophetic dream. And in that prophetic dream, what happened was Jesus appeared and was talking to me about, about the cross, about putting it on the cross, about trusting the work of the cross. And then he stretched his arms out and said, bring it to me, bring your prayer requests, bring your, he not only said like hopes and dreams and all of the fears and worries and disappointments, but when it hit the word disappointment, it was as though something triggered in me, something went off in me. It was like a light illuminated. If we don't release all the disappointments and we don't stop living in the midst of the disappointments, how can we go forward into all the divine appointments that God has for us? God has healing for us. God has wholeness and wellness and life and life more abundantly. But if we live in our past disappointments, will that in a sense be baggage? Will it bog us down? Will it hold us down from living in the fullness of all of God's divine appointments? And disappointed is a past term and appointments is something that's in the future. I have a daytimer calendar. It's in, it's in our little dressing room over here. I never go anywhere without it if I can possibly avoid it. I like to have it in front of me. I like to know where I'm going. I like to know what I'm doing. Jesus set a course just like that. If we will stop the disappointments and get into God's divine appointments, 
Wow, they can fill up a calendar so much better than anything I could write in. So I pray for you. If you want to give us your prayer request, that's what you're seeing on the cross. People have, have typed in, written in, oralroberts.com slash the cross, oralroberts.com slash the cross. And when they go there, they've been giving us that same thing, hopes, dreams, prayer requests, disappointments, divine appointments. And as that's coming in, we're putting it behind us so that when we walk around here, it's right in kind of a pathway in our, in our building. And it's in the pathway where we can stop and lay hands on it and pray and speak to it and expect a miracle and pray over those prayer requests. So while you send them in to us, I want you to do a couple things. First of all, I want you to expect a miracle. Second of all, release your faith and say in the name of Jesus, by faith, through faith, in faith, the just shall live by faith, expect a miracle. And then the third thing is to release all of the junk, the stuff, the attack of the devil and just say, and I'm talking just in a sense, spiritually speaking here, just say, devil, you cannot have me. I let it go. I let the past, the worry, the fear, the torment, I let it go. I release it and I let it go. And when you let it go, begin to expect a miracle, speak it, say it, expect it, and believe that as you do, you get to walk in it according to the word and the will of God. And most of all, according to the work on the cross. In the dream, Jesus said, trust the work of the cross. And it's time for us, you know, we put our trust here and then it kind of vaporizes. We do this, we do that. Things change immediately, but trust the work of the cross. So I want to encourage you, go to oralroberts.com and I pray as you do, it will be a blessing and we will all pray and expect a miracle. In the mini book, Blessing Blockers, Richard explains how hurtful experiences or personal battles in your life could be blocking your blessings from God. Fear, unforgiveness, and doubt are just a few of the things on the list. Learn how to tear down these obstacles in your life and put yourself in a direct position to receive God's blessings and miracles. It's a free gift to you. Just log on to oralroberts.com slash bookstore to order. This is my uh, new book, Blessing Blockers. Uh, thinking about all the different things that keep people from receiving the healing that they desperately need. And I've listed them in this book and taken quite a bit of time to explain uh, what, what, what they are and, and, and what to do. It's not just knowing what, what it is, you need to know what to do. You've got to have direction. The Holy Spirit has guided me in this. Um, here are some of the blessing blockers that affect many people. Doubt, fear and anxiety, that's a blessing blocker. Unbelief, a spirit of pride, not knowing what the Bible says and not doing what the Bible says to do, uh, not following biblical instructions on giving, lack of patience, unforgiveness, holding on to the past, that's a terrible blessing blocker, keeping God's healing power away from you. Unhealthy relationships can stop the blessing. A sin is an obvious blessing, blessing blocker. Negative thinking, you know, have you ever been around someone, all they do is, is talk negative? You know, that, that's not a, an atmosphere to get healed in. Uh, guilt and condemnation is terrible. Guilt and condemnation comes from the devil, doesn't come from God. Uh, I, I'll explain all that in this book. Now, when I wrote it, I had people in mind who, who, who face needs like that in their lives. And so when I wrote it, I decided I would not sell it, but I would give it. It's yours and it's free. I just got to know that you want it. So write me, Richard Roberts, in care of this ministry, or call the prayer group at 918 Four nine five seven 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 seven. Ask for your free copy of Blessing Blockers. I'll send it to you. And thank you, Lindsay, for that special word a few minutes ago, by the way. Uh, this is from uh, Johnny in Vernon, Alabama. I requested prayer while I was in the hospital with COVID. Almost died one night, but today I'm going home. Thank you for your prayers. Um, I, I want to walk better, I want to stand better, I want to breathe better. Okay, Johnny, uh, we're going to put that testimony and prayer request up on the cross behind me. And I got this from Valerie. I, 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 it's been like, in a, like, like COVID brain fog. Please pray for me. Uh, Dory in uh, Florida, uh, anxiety, please pray for me. Uh, Judy, anxiety, she's in Concord, North Carolina. Please pray for me and put this on the cross. If you just tuned in, I have this huge cross behind me and we're taking these prayer requests and we're pinning them or putting them on the cross as a result of the prophetic dream that Lindsay had a few weeks ago 
where Jesus appeared to her and show, showed her that she was to take prayer requests and put them on the cross because the cross symbolizes salvation and healing. Jesus, the Bible says, endured the cross for the joy. What was the joy? The joy was so that men and women, like you and me, would not perish, but have everlasting life. He endured the cross that we might not only be saved, but healed. Remember, he shed his blood for the remission of sin, and he also took the stripes on his back for our healing. And that's what this is all about. So send me the prayer request that you have, and I will pin it on the cross. Uh, Billy says, I, I, I want to put this on the cross. I'm believing cancer will never come back, okay? Uh, Susan says, pin this on the cross. I need to lose weight. <laughs> Glory to God. I've lost 10 pounds. I'm working on it. <laughs> and other people, you, you, you want prayer for your weight. Let me know, all right? oralroberts.com slash the cross. Uh, Brenda says, pray for my, my daughter. Uh, Charlotte, pray for the healing of my left leg and for my grandbabies. All right, Winston, uh, put this on the cross. Praying for my, my daughter, Claire, and uh, a new job for her. Kathleen says, put this on the cross. Diabetic and my A1C is very high. And uh, neurop neuropathy pain, blood, poor blood circulation. Put it on the cross. I'll do that. Uh, Shawan, uh, restoration of my lymphatic system. Put this on the cross. Oralroberts.com slash the cross. I'll put your prayer request here. I'll be praying for it over every day, every day, believing God for your miracle. Be sure to ask for your copy of my, my new book, Blessing Blockers. And I set my faith with you in the name, by the way, the book is free. Set my faith with you in Jesus' name. There's no distance in prayer. God's right here where I am in Tulsa. He's right there where you are. In the authority of Jesus' name, I send that word to you. I rebuke every sickness, every disease, every fear, every doubt, anything that's unlike God, come out in the name of Jesus. I believe God with you for a mighty, 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 mighty miracle. And I am expecting it to begin now. I'll see you next time right here from The Place for Miracles.